So at this point, everybody watching this video probably knows about the Raspberry Pi. And of course I do as well, and I've been using them for the better part of three years now. Started off with some really simple projects on it, grew into some different DIY and tech projects through my school, and nowadays I actually use them for more server-side stuff, hosting small web apps, and powering things around my home using them. My main thing that I really enjoy using it for is using uh, Raspberry Pi 4 for running HomeBridge that allows us to connect any non-Apple HomeKit devices to our Apple HomeKit system because we do use HomePods and a lot of the devices that we have in our house don't natively support HomeKit, but with that HomeBridge Raspberry Pi, we are able to connect the most of them to our HomeKit network. But this is the kind of system that I've had for a while where I will just have the Raspberry Pis at random places around the house, normally where there's an Ethernet outlet or a network switch. Most of them are collided inside of our server closet, which is not pretty and needs to be updated very soon, maybe a future video. Um, but I wanted to kind of centralize them all together into one spot. And we do have a server rack where we have one main server, a network switch, and some more networking stuff sitting there. And we have plenty of bays open and rack space on there. So I decided to search on Thingiverse to try and find myself a Raspberry Pi rack. And I was actually able to find one that was pretty neat. Um, and that turned into a two-week project that I figured I could actually turn into a video. So this video kind of deep dives into the printing process, the creation process, and getting all the Raspberry Pis in the SERP rack. At this point, I only have two of my three Raspberry Pis in there, but I will kind of talk about why that is the case uh, in this video. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. Alrighty, so this project started off about two years ago when I came across this video by Jeff Geerling. It's a couple years old at this point, but it was about him running and creating a Raspberry Pi rack using a model he found on Thingiverse. He printed the whole thing off on his 3D printer along with some couple parts from the local hardware store. And honestly, I thought that looked really neat, especially because if you want to find one that's pre-made on Amazon, you'll be looking at about $80 in cost. And I don't really have that money to spend on a Raspberry Pi rack that most likely won't be in that rack for very long. So I decided to go the DIY route and follow along kind of with his video Basically, I kind of use this video for inspiration as to how to get started. I found that Thingiverse file just like he had used, and I actually got started printing it off. The first couple prints did not go as planned. Um, I had a lot of weird ridging on them, um, and I ended up actually figuring that was because of the way I was printing it. I actually had flipped it because I thought that would be easier for the supports to build on. Turns out, yes, it was quicker and did seem a bit better when I designed it in the slicer. It ended up being awful for actually getting the trays into the mounts, and eventually I just decided I'm just going to go back to how I should have done it before, and I just printed them as they were sent in the SDL file. Um, and yes, they did take a bit longer each, taking about five and five hours and 30 minutes, but each of them came out looking great, and though I had a bit more work cleaning up with the supports, overall the project just went a lot smoother after that. So getting the six racks that would be going across the server rack printed took me about a day and a half of printing, especially because I would run one through the night and then it would actually finish at midnight so I wasn't able to catch it and put another one on there till the morning. But overall, it didn't take too long. But those were was that I printed first, after which I decided to get started on the actual trays that would that would have each Raspberry Pi sitting on them. These each were about an hour and 30 minutes printing, so I got the majority of them done in one day. And these also, I experimented a little bit with how I was going to print it. My Mono Price Voxel, which is the 3D printer that I have, um, does a decent job at printing, but it definitely has some stringing issues, especially on smaller prints like this. But after a bit of tweaking, I was able to find a model that I thought would work. And after that, printing one of those tests and actually seeing if it would slide into the tray just fine, it did. So I finished up getting all the rest of those printed off. At this point, we had a couple days of just waiting. Um, because we, we live out in the country, um, and my family doesn't go into town that often. And because of that, Menards being on the other side of town, which is the hardware store of our choice, was a couple weeks away. Luckily... 4th of July was coming up, and we would actually be in Anigo with family, and Anigo um, had a Menards, so I was able to go there before we got started with all of our celebrations, and I picked up the two rods that I was going to need to complete the project. 4th of July was amazing to spend that with our family, um, and then once I got home, I did end up getting right back to work on the project because I had everything I was going to need at that point. Um, so I got started, I cut the rods down to the size that they would be needing with a metal saw, 
and once they were fitting in nicely, I was able to get them all set up. Looking at them all together, they actually turned out really nice. It was a very simple build, and honestly, the printing was the part that took the longest, um, which I did expect because I don't have the fastest printer, but I wanted it to still have that quality there. So getting them all printed off worked pretty nice, getting them all put together worked pretty nice, and getting them mounted in the rack was the quickest part yet because all it took was just mounting the rack ears on it and just screwing them into the rack, which was very quick in time. At this point, I actually took the trays and I put two Raspberry Pis into them. The first one was a Raspberry Pi 4 running Internet Pi, a, another open source program created by Jeff Geerling that allows you to monitor your internet uptime, uh, internet speed 24-7. It runs a speed test every couple minutes. So that I've been running for a couple weeks at this point, and I got that Raspberry Pi into the rack, and that was easy enough. Um, that one is actually running with USB-C power. Now the reason I bring that up is because this model is actually designed for you to be using the Raspberry Pi PoE at. If you're wondering what PoE is, I can give a simple explanation to that question, but you'll probably find a better result in something like Wikipedia. To put it into simple terms, PoE is basically just a standard that allows Ethernet cables, which you use to transfer data from your computer to the internet, going through your router first, but then to the internet. You can use those Ethernet cables to also provide power to the device that you're connecting to, in this case, the Raspberry Pi. Instead of plugging your computer through an Ethernet cable directly into your router, you'd put a PoE switch in the middle of it. What this does is integrates power over that Ethernet cable, which allows it to power that end device, which for me would be the Raspberry Pi. Now, most devices that have PoE power would support it natively, the Raspberry Pi, however, uses USB-C power most of the time, meaning it needs an external power supply. However, using that PoE hat, you can actually provide power through Ethernet without having to have any other cables installed. And that would allow you to take out any need for an external power supply or with Raspberry Pis powering them by USB-C. Instead, I would power them over Ethernet, which I am still working on trying to figure out. In my current system, I don't have any PoE hats for the Raspberry Pi. I did order one, and that will be arriving very soon, I hope. But at this point, and when I was building this, I didn't have any on hand. So I had to kind of mount the two Raspberry Pis a bit further away from each other, uh, because having a USB-C cable would take out one tray to the left of it, meaning it kind of took down. I couldn't have six in there. It was probably only going to be held like three or two. And that was okay, because at this point, I only have three in total, because it's impossible to get Raspberry Pis right now. But because of that, um, it was a bit of an inconvenient. When that PoE hat does come in, I'm probably going to use that on my Raspberry Pi 3 that I want to put into the rack, because that uses a USB Type-B standard, I think. I think that's what it's called. And I can't figure out any cable that would actually fit and plug into that as it is, so that's completely usable until I get a PoE hat. So I did order myself a PoE switch and a PoE hat for that Raspberry Pi, and maybe I'll make a secondary update video or sneak it into the end of this video to kind of show you how that worked. But that's what most of these racks are intended to be used for. And using PoE in a Raspberry Pi is probably the best way you could ever power one because it means you're only ever going to need one cable plugged into it because Ethernet's going to supply the power, which takes out the USB-C, as well as your internet, meaning you would, as long as it's plugged into the network switch and connected to your network, you can SSH into your server from your normal computer, like I use my Mac, um, and pretty much control the whole Linux interface that the Raspberry Pi is running all from your own computer. And... Again, I really should have bought some of these a while ago, but I didn't have the money and I didn't know I was going to need one about half, until about halfway through the project. Great job me not reading the description on the Thingiverse listing, but that's just normal me. So at this point, the thing, the Raspberry Pi rack was in our network rack and I got one of them powered up running that Internet Pi and it worked great. I mean, again, it's nothing different with the Raspberry Pi. It's just how it's mounted. And it's very efficient. I don't need to just have them double stick tape to the top of our network switch, which is what I was doing before. Um, but now it is in a nice rack, perfectly safe, and a lot more professional. I have room for six Raspberry Pis in this rack, and once they become more available, I plan to buy and fill up all six of them because there's a lot of stuff you can do with Raspberry Pis, and it would be amazing to see these all up and running, running some really cool open source programs and different operating systems and software, which I would all I would always hope to kind of publish and talk about here on this channel. So with all that said, I think we should take a step back and kind of talk about what I learned through this. Um, but wait, wait, I do have some stuff that maybe you could use. So 
if you wanted to do a project like this, I would totally recommend it. If you have a lot of Raspberry Pis that you're just sitting around your house, it is pretty nice to have a single spot that you can put them all. And having them in a network rack is really nice, especially if you're starting off in your home lab journey and you don't have any server. Having six Raspberry Pis just sitting there blinking away in your server rack not only looks really cool, but is very effective because not only can you run like a a website on each of them or a program on each of them. You can get them set up running Docker containers and run multiple things at once. There's really no more power efficient computer that you can find than the Raspberry Pi. These things are amazing. And of course, once they're in stock again, you'll be able to buy some more. But at this point, they're the best thing you can pretty much find when it comes to power efficiency. So with all that said, this is a really neat project to kind of work with, print off, and get set up. I really enjoyed it. It was, it's in my mind, it seemed like it took a long time, but once I condensed it all into this video, you can see it was actually pretty quick. Really, the only thing you're going to need to do something like this is a 3D printer in a local hardware store to pick up those parts, and you can get yourself up and running a lot quicker than I did. Um, I'd say about a week you could have this whole thing set up and get all your Raspberry Pis in a server rack. So with all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I was testing out a little bit of a different format here, but again, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, be sure to like the video and subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. Uh, be sure to actually comment um, what you would like me to see to do next, because I really like this Raspberry Pi stuff. I've been getting a lot more involved with coding with Raspberry Pis and iOS development, so if you would like to see anything under that terms, I would be happy to make some more videos like this. So with all that said, thank you all for watching, have a great rest of your day, and see you all next time. Bye-bye.